Hi guys, Dr. Linda Kramer. Thanks for watching. Today is questions about heaven. Now, one of the first things that I want to just do as a disclaimer, which I will put down into the description here, everything that I explain is in my own personal experience and my own personal perspective. Okay. Um, I went to heaven in 2001 when I died and I went up there for what I call five years which I'll explain today because it's about time, these questions today, okay? So when I died, I met my great, 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 great grandmother and she explained this stuff to me. But that doesn't mean that you can just trust what I say, okay? Because we all have our own perspective and our own occurrences of what do exist in our own conscious awareness, okay? Because that's big today, conscious awareness. So... I've got two questions here that we're going to answer today. And please know for privacy, I've changed these questions to make them more generic as to what a lot of people would ask me. Okay, so they're more um, relevant to a lot of people out there. All right, so let's get stuck into the two questions that I'm going to do today. First question, my mum died six months ago. Why hasn't she come through to see me yet? So the first thing here is I've got to answer with psychology. You know, when I had my near-death experience, I realized that there's so much about psychology that goes into the paranormal and science. So over the past 20 years, I've studied a lot of science as well as psychology I've never received a qualification in them. That's why I'll never say I've got a bachelor in science or anything like that. Okay. I've got a PhD, hence the doctor in front of my name. Okay. So mum died six months ago and she hasn't come through to see me yet. So the first thing in psychology that we have to address here is there's a lot of questions. Why do we need that parent to come through? It may be due to insecurities. It may be doubts about what happens after death. You know, we want that confirmation that they've gone on and they're still really alive, even though in their body passed. We may want to address things through psychology, whereby we've got to look inside ourselves and say, what do I need that other person to do for me? Where I can't have that own authority or that own strength within where I can heal that emotional trauma okay so the first thing whenever we say oh gosh mum died five years ago why hasn't she ever come to see me didn't she love me you know because that's the first thing people ask didn't she love me I thought she did of course she did of course she did but we've got to look also at trauma you know Nobody grieves in the same process. Some people, they get through their past traumas and grieve, you know, sadness, etc. Some people, it only takes six days. Some people, it takes six weeks, six months, six decades to get through that same traumatic experience. So no one goes through this the same. So we can never, ever compare um, what happens to others, it should also happen to us. And remember here, you know, some families have 15 children. So you've got 15 siblings who've just all lost their mother. One's, one brother might say, oh yeah, mum came and saw me after three months. The next one might say, you know, a sister in that 15 mix, she might say, oh, mum came after a year. And we're sitting there, mum's never come to see me. Why is that? So don't compare because we don't know how other people deal with their grief, okay? Some people put on great shows. Oh, everything's fine with me today. But underneath, they're still burning with that sadness, okay? So don't just go by what they say or how they look, ever. Don't ever do that. Remember Robin Williams, the actor. Look at the depression, etc. he had. But he was out there making people funny every day and laugh. So don't ever judge how someone dresses or how they act or what words they say because we don't know what they're hiding underneath, okay? 
So don't compare yourself. Mum came through to him only after three days, but she hasn't come to see me yet. Don't judge. Just allow it, okay? So why can't she come through? We've got to look at her free will and her decisions as well. So we can't just have that need where we have that expectation. Oh, mum, you've got to come and see me now. It's like an ultimatum, right? You know, why haven't you come through to me now? Have, was I an awful kid? Didn't you love me? Get all those thoughts out of your head, okay? Because they're just limited beliefs and it's not based on truth, okay? So when we really look at why that relative hasn't come through yet, we've got to sit there and say to ourselves, are they in a position where they want to come to us? You know, I've got a 15-year-old daughter and let's just say I hadn't seen her for six months, okay? She goes out to camp or she wants to travel. After six months, how am I going to react when I see her again? Am I going to be sad and say, oh, darling, I missed you so much. I've been upset. I couldn't live without you. I do, blah, 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 blah. Or am I going to be happy, excited, and say, oh, wow, darling, oh, thank God, oh, you know, you're here, you're safe, I love you. Oh, my gosh, did you go there? Did you have a good time? So we're positive, okay? So when a parent, especially a parent that we've lost, do you honestly believe that they want to come through and hurt us more if we're still grieving and haven't healed from that pain yet? Absolutely not. So, you know, we may have a sibling and the mum turns up three months later and we're sitting there, well, mum hasn't come to me yet. So we don't know what that sibling is going through. They may be grieving to a point where they can't get through it. So that parent does come down with a sign and says it's going to be okay to give them that driving force so then they do heal and get over that trauma so then they can become more positive people after the event. Okay? So we don't know why deceased relatives come through for one person and not another. Okay? Okay? Because we can't go inside the heads of every other person on the planet and say, what are you going through? Are you still struggling? Are you so happy on the outside? Are you still struggling? Have you still got past hurts that you haven't dealt with? We can't do that because we all have to take our own personal responsibility for everything that we create within our brain. Okay? So this is all about psychology. And that's why I incorporate psychology into the paranormal because it is so much psychology in there, okay? Now, the other thing I've got is my timeline. So I've done up some decades from 1990 through to 2030. The other thing here that we have to consider is, let me just get a red pen out. Let's just say now this represents our mother, okay? Because that was the question. My mum died six months ago. She hasn't come and seen me yet. Let's just say mum died in the year 2006, so 2006 is about there. So that's where mum has passed away. We're now up here in 2022. So there's a timeline, okay? When our mum has passed and she goes to heaven, now this is what I experience, so it's my perspective, right? So now I'll go to green. When mum passed at this point in 2006, she doesn't have time. Time does not exist. You know, there's so many people and they say, oh, when I pass away three months later, I'll come and stop the clocks. Or I'll come through on our anniversary and I'll show you something that reminds you that I'm there in a year. So people make these packs before they die, right? Especially like I will go there like cancers where you know that you've, you're deteriorating and your body's going to die. Okay, and they say, oh, honey, I'll come back in a year and I'll give you a white rose type thing, right? We can do that, okay, because it has happened. But when we go to heaven, there's no time from one point to the other. So we're here when we're in heaven because this is all, this is all time, 
when we go there. So how do we come through a year after our own death and give a rose or something to somebody? Or how do we come through three months later? Because it's all due to our conscious awareness, okay? Our emotional state. We connect through our emotions, which is our energy, okay? So I'm here right now as Linda, right? Because this is going to be important in my next question. So I'm here right now in what's called the Linda life or the Linda existence, right? When I think of my grandmother who passed about 15 odd years ago, right? When I think about my mother, what I'm actually doing there is I'm sending out an energetic vibration like a ripple where I'm connecting to her in heaven. Okay, so when I think about my grandmother, I'm creating through that thought a perspective or an intention. So I'm putting that out there into the cosmic universal energy forces. And where she is in that other dimension of heaven, she can detect that through her own energetic conscious awareness. So I'm here as the Linda, and I'm putting out these vibes. She's up in heaven. Kink. They connect. And that's why she can come through and be with me today. Okay? So think of it that way. It's all about energy. They connect through that emotional state. So if we're in an emotional state where we're sad, and we're like, oh, mum died, I can't live anymore, I don't want to be here anymore. And please know, if you are in that state, please go seek special attention. Go and talk to a doctor, okay? Please do that, okay? Or find somebody who you can talk to. Don't feel alone, okay? But when we're in that sadness, do you honestly think that they're going to come through and make us sadder or more upset? They love us so much that they'll wait until we are emotionally healed for them to come through. Okay? Sometimes it takes years. We don't judge or accuse others why it takes so long to grieve. So allow yourself that time. Just know that they're there, patiently loving you from afar and allowing you to have that opportunity for emotional growth okay so now let's go into my second question if we reincarnate how can we pop in to see relatives two years after we died huh because we have to remember here guys there's no time in heaven okay and that's something that we can sort of all agree on all right a lot of NDE is say when I was up there there's no time okay so that's one of those synchronicities, which is like that similarity or commonality that a lot of NDEs actually say. So let's go back to our time zone, okay? So now I'll go to blue. If we reincarnate immediately, how do we go and see someone six months later? Okay, so let's go back. Now I'll call it dad, okay? We just spoke about mum. Let's make it now dad, okay? So let's say dad died in 2006 right so here's dad right this here from that point across to that point could be 30 years because there's no time in heaven so if someone let's just say we die today we go straight up and do our life review and it's really easy so we process it really fast seconds seconds in time then we go straight into the tunnel and we're reborn instantly okay that all happens in this little blink of time but here on earth it could represent 10 20 30 40 years okay so that's why they can pop in 10 years later because they're still in this moment of a blink of an eyelid okay 
So there's no time up there. So they can't say, um, um, you know, I've, I've reincarnated immediately. Okay. Now I'm going to go a little bit deeper with this. So now I've just got to draw myself a new one because I want to get rid of this piece of paper. Okay. I'm just going to do another time zone. Okay. Because this is really cool. I did a video about reincarnation. Okay. So go find go find that one on my videos. It's called How Reincarnation Works. All right. So we've got our timeline. 2000, 2010, 2020, 2030, and 2040. Right? So here's another time zone. Okay? So what I've stated, our soul, souls are eternal. But we can have more than one life existence, like Linda existence, happening at more than one time. Okay? Because there's no time up there. So... Let's just say some Linda, right? I was born in 1966. So right now at 2022, there's Linda. Okay, so that's Linda. When Linda dies, goes through a life review, does what she has to do in heaven to heal all the wounds of her past and this life, life of Linda, right? I might be born again in 2010. So in 2010, and I live until 2080, but now I'm called Peter, Peter Smith, and I'm born in Venezuela, okay? Linda is born in Australia, but he might be born in Venezuela. When Peter dies, he might say, okay, now I want to be born in 1980, and he dies in 2030. So off the grid, come in. And he dies in 2030. So then we've got another life. We, this time we might come back as a cat. Okay? So the cat. The cats live for about, say, 15 years. So the cat might have been born in 2005. And it dies in 2020. Okay? So right now we've got one. There's Linda. There's Peter in Venezuela. There's another person. And there's the cat. All at this time okay they're all existing together on the planet in this time how does that work ever heard of soulmates ever heard of twin flames this is what my perspective is on how this all works it's our one soul but we could meet ourselves oh my god linda could have that cat as her best friend she may marry the guy from Venezuela called Peter. Okay? Twin flames. This is how it all works. Okay? So if we reincarnate, how can we come in and see our relatives two years after our death? Well, which life are you referring to? <laughs> because right now, as I've just explained, one, two, three, four, four lives. But there could be 400. There could be 4 million of us, our soul, working around, walking around the planet right now. Okay? How many souls do actually exist? There's, there's 8 billion people alive. But look how many animals there are as well. You know, I'd hate to think. Ants. How many ants are on the planet? We're talking like hundreds and hundreds of billions just there, just for one species of ant. They all have souls. They all, all have a consciousness. They reincarnate. I saw heaps of ants in, in when I went to heaven. So they're there. So they've got a soul, right? So how many lifetimes have we actually got where we can say, okay, today I'm in the Linda life. So when um, Linda dies, she may come back to see like my daughter, right? And it might be two months after I passed. But in that time, I've already reincarnated. So now I'm Peter from, um, where did I say? Venezuela. Okay. So... When he passes, he may have a wife, he may have children, okay? So he's going to go and see them ultimately, of course, okay? But he might want to come and see the cat. Who owned the cat? He might want to go and be that person. He might want to come through as the soul. So it's not Peter turning up to see my relatives. It's my soul in the persona of Linda. So this is where it gets deep, guys, okay? So, if we reincarnate, how can we pop in to see relatives two years after we're dead? Okay? 
question. Good question. Because there's no time. There's no time. We we put so much of um, thought onto the fact that we are this person. But this person is only a persona. It is only an actor, if you want to say it like that. Linda right now is an actor acting out the existence or the reality in order to learn life lessons and to do her life path in accordance with what her soul needs to learn to better itself. Okay, so when I went home, our soul is what I was seeing. I was seeing all the souls. And that's why people were changing from one person to another. I saw a bear turn into a little boy. I saw another boy turn into a dog. Okay. I saw a lady turn into a younger version from like the 1960s with short bobbed hair. Okay. Just as classic examples of what I saw, which I talk about in my book, Five Years in Heaven, The Teachings of Heaven. So our souls, we've got to remember, are eternal. How many lives have we had? And You've got to remember, if you're sitting in heaven thinking, oh my God, I've had 16,428,226 lives. How much time is it going to take to pop in to see that wife, to pop in and see that husband? Then I'm going to pop in and see all the kids from that life. Then I'm going to pop in and see the auntie from that life. We do it all instantly because there's no time. No time. So I hope that you've liked these two questions today. Please know I'm going to do this segment more often to explain some stuff to make us all a little bit more aligned within our own solistic um, being, our awareness, our consciousness. If you do have comments or questions, any feedback, please comment below. I love my feedback, good and bad. If you believe in something else, let me know because it's all theories. Okay, so don't take my word as golden here. It's all theories that we present Okay, because we're trying to delve all this into um, finding out the truth together, aren't we? Okay, so ultimately, if you do want to share this video with your friends, please go ahead. Okay, so hey, go watch this video. Um, please know that I do this segment quite a few times a week now. Okay, now that I've started it. If you've got any questions for future ones, please comment below. Because, um, yeah, the more we know, the more we grow. Have a great day, guys, and I'll talk to you all soon. Okay. Bye. To learn more about your Solistic Alignment, please press the like button and click subscribe. To purchase any of Dr. Linda Kramer's books or services, please visit www.lindaray.info.